Hey everyone, welcome back to Friends You Can Grow With. I am Matt Nespri, sitting down with me today, two very special friends of mine, two friends I love getting to talk to, hang out with. We have Billy Smith and we have Jeremy Box here sitting with me. So welcome guys. Thanks, Thank you for Thank being you. a part today of the conversation and let's just dive in and get a little bit to know you guys. Let's start with you, Billy, you're right next to me. Tell us yeah. a little bit about who you are, yeah. what you do. Yeah. So Billy Smith, as you said, <clears throat> um, so I'm a business owner. I, uh, I work in the healthcare industry. I do, uh, a little bit of everything. I actually sell medical equipment and then we install the equipment into the hospital space or the healthcare spaces that we, um, provide service to with our customers. Um, I've been doing that for, this is my eighth year. Uh, yeah, eighth year. <laughs> I had to think about that one. Um, but yeah, I have a great team that works with me and, uh, we just get the opportunity to serve the community and serve, um, the customers in the healthcare industry and the food service industry. So, um, that's really my, my, today full-time job i work part-time at some other little ventures that i do including working in the ministry here at the church so um it's uh it's a really cool um place that i'm in i, I get to yeah. see a lot of a, a good a good bit of things i get to be in the corporate space i get to be in the ministry space and then i collide the two together to enjoy a, a yeah. life that's fulfilling so yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah and jeremy go ahead fill us in a little bit about yourself yeah jeremy box um i'm a business owner entrepreneur um as well much like billy uh, I've been in the oil and gas space for about well, just over 20 years now, and I started my own company in that space, more in the upstream lane. Uh, we do some consulting with operators, uh, ENP companies, big companies like Conoco and Exxon, all the way down to small private-backed independent companies as well. Uh, kind of more on the land and legal side of things, not so much like out on a rig, what you think of oil and gas, where we're more like unseen, sitting at our desk mm -hmm. type of vibe. But um and what we do is we help provide staffing to uh, to projects where they need to staff up projects, staff down projects, and we help kind of facilitate all of that. From a contractor side, um, I started my own company in that lane about, well, in uh, late 2017. So we're in hmm. our, give or take, seventh year of business now, I guess. Yeah, seventh year of business. Wow. Um, and we've just seen a uh, great growth. It's been awesome. In the, about the same year, in the same year I started that, I started a a branding and marketing agency with a business partner as well here, here locally. And we sold that last year, mm -hmm. um, and which was a blessing to be able to do and, and um, bless people with a team that we'd been able to build over a few years. And so I still help help out in that space some with some like consulting on mm -hmm. on different campaigns that they might need my take on just from because I have a little bit of experience now. Yeah. And uh, but but my life's pretty much, you know, family, God, business, uh, family, family, family. You yeah, know, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah. lot of good yeah. growing boys and yeah, uh, yeah. 14 and 10 year old and great wife here at, that works, helps here at the church some. Her name's yeah. Ashley. And uh, yeah, man, life is good. And we love being in Conroe and, um, you know, God's blessed us with a great community and yeah. great opportunity to build business. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I wanted to have you guys both on because you mm -hmm. share a lot of things in common. You're both business owners. Uh, you're both fathers. Yeah. Uh, and you're both Christians. Yep. So pretty busy, busy with the business and the fatherhood side of things, I can imagine. Yep. And the Christianity side of things, I imagine, doesn't always lighten the load and sometimes can even maybe uh, make it a little heavier. So today in this conversation, I'd really like to explore um, helping people find their fit. I, I've heard in the church a lot of times, sometimes people say, um, they feel like they don't know what they're good at. They don't feel like God's given them a, a gift or a calling or something to pursue where they feel like they can be part of God's purpose for their life. Um, and that's why I wanted to sit down with you guys because you guys are both fulfilling God's purpose for your life. You've been doing it for a while and you're doing it in a way that is um, untypical from what we've had with normal other guests on this podcast. So my first question right off the bat is how did you guys get into what you do now? Your, your business owning, your entrepreneurial ship, was that something that was always inside of you even growing up or is it something you kind of fell into? Yeah. You want to go first? Go for it, man. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it definitely was there like mm -hmm. always I, I don't know that i would have called it entrepreneurial entrepreneurship um but ministry really was my first passion i grew mm -hmm. up in a pastor's home okay. um, my father was a pastor mom and dad were church planners all across small towns in texas as i was growing up and uh, my mom's father was a pastor as well in the baptist denomination first and until he experienced 
the Holy Spirit and mm-hmm. it kind of shifted uh, who he associated with because this is the way it was then, yeah. 50s, 60s, you know, that time frame. And so I grew up in that environment, um, but my father, be, being a pastor, he was also bivocational. He owned a general construction business as well. He built homes, remodels, all that kind of stuff, right? And so the environment I grew up in, we were we were working all of the time. Whether mm-hmm. I was helping him on job sites or I was helping him um, in a church, you know, mm-hmm. whether that church was in a, a old storefront or a school or starting in a home, you know, we it was always like set up, break down, set up, have service, break down, go home, set yeah. up, have service break down go home and so there's always this effort going on a lot of hard work that went into everything we did and so that was definitely starting new things and building things Mm -hmm. were always a part of my life and so that that for sure um, helped build and form me Um, you know knowing how that applied to business that was something that and I'm I'm sure we'll get into some other questions but that was something that really took place later in my life Mm -hmm. um because until I was probably 25, 26 years old, even though I was in a, the middle of a, the beginning of a career um, at the time, uh, by that age, I was still all, all in on the ministry. Like when I mean ministry, I mean traditional vocational hmm. ministry. I was, I was a youth pastor at a church. Uh, I was associate worship pastor and on the board of directors of the church, even at that young age, it was hmm. a small church. And, um, you know, at that point, I really was just in a job waiting for my opportunity to go on staff full-time at a church Mm -hmm. and uh things i'll let billy go take a take a stab as well but things shifted uh right after i had my first son i was 27 almost 28 years old and god really started shifting the way i thought about what ministry is and what business is yeah that's interesting billy that's awesome yeah my story is a little different with regard to how i got into entrepreneurship i uh I've always had a desire to be a leader in some capacity. It seems like it's uh, it's just ingrained in me to to lead it, whatever mm-hmm. that is, whether it's um, leading in you know the the areas of business or leading in my family, whatever it is. I've always held I've always held that really um, strong in me. And so um, the way I got into my business that I own now was by way of working for someone, mm-hmm. and there was a need, and that need simply existed far beyond the time that I got there, it was already there with regard to having somebody come and do assembly work for the stuff that we were selling. And so, um, I saw that opportunity and I jumped on it immediately because Mm -hmm. I thought, man, this is a gateway into something that could be bigger than myself. And, uh, so I did, I, I got, I got involved and, um, it's truly become something that I didn't, uh, I didn't imagine it to be. It's, it's become a a bigger than my expected vision. I, um, I have, been able to see the Lord open up windows and doors of opportunity throughout that. And the cool part for me is I've always had a passion and a desire to have um, people go to work and supply the financial needs for their family. That's been my burden. That's been mm. my desire. That's that's my why, if you will. Yeah. And so for me, that that has come to its fruition by way of getting into this, this opportunity um, and It's just so cool to see God open up those doors as you just take a step of faith, a step of obedience. And trust me when I say it's a step of faith, it's huge. It's (laughs) working at a consistent paycheck job for so long and then going into business for yourself. Jeremy and I have actually had conversations about this before. The hardest decision is to hire that next person. (laughs) And, you know, it's it's a sacrifice, but you always want that. And so... um, yeah, it's it's something I fell into, and and I say I fell into it. It was something that I saw a need, and I said, "Hey, let's go fulfill the need and mm-hmm. see what it, it turns out to be." Yeah, so, and the uh, doors kind of opened. Yeah, up and, yeah, I actually was fortunate enough to um, own a couple small businesses in the in the middle of all of that. Um, we won't get into all those little details, but I, you know, just by investment sake and mm-hmm. different things, I I was able to find myself in little nooks of business that again I didn't expect to be a part of. It just as I walked in obedience of opening up one company, here comes other opportunities yeah. along with it. And similar to Jeremy. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That's awesome. Jeremy, I love where you paused right there because I feel like you're about to hit exactly what I'm wanting to talk about. So you mentioned your father's a, a pastor at a church, right. working full-time ministry, yep. um, and yet doing jobs on the side. Oh, no. This was or his business. His yeah. business. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You yeah. you could say ministry it, ministry was definitely not his side hustle. Yes. But but it was it was there was less financial provision in the ministry for yeah. him than there was in his business. And so yeah. it was very much his core occupation. And then he had a calling on his life and this is what God called him to do. And he's like, Well, these are 
These are wow. two things. These are the two things I do with my life. Yeah. And yeah. I, I learned very early because of that, like we, we don't have to reduce our lives to this one area and think that what, some people can be that myopic with their life. And I think that's actually a blessing if you get to be that. Mm -hmm. I just haven't had yeah. that luxury in my life where God's like, yeah, you're only going to do this one thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I saw that modeled for me. Thank goodness. Yeah. Otherwise I would have thought I was maybe a little crazy Yeah. thinking I, maybe I, you know, just chasing tail all the time, mm -hmm. like rabbit tra trails all the time. Like, yeah you know, goodness gracious, you know, what, what am I doing with my life? But, you know, because I saw that modeled, I was able to, I was able to kind of understand and, um, you know, like, okay, God's got other things in my life besides just this one thing. Yeah. yeah. And so with that, you said that he kind of held these two things, his, his ministry and his yep. business, yep. were they in his mind separate or were they part of his life? Yeah. That's a great question. You know? I think, I think had, a had I asked that, he, he passed two years ago. And so mm -hmm. I think had I asked that question, and, and we had these conversations later in life, had I asked that in the middle of it, he would have he would have definitely said that they were the same. Mm -hmm. um, but how I saw that modeled was, was that they were different. Mm -hmm. You know, not that there was anything wrong with it, but, um, and, and I say that just to say that there, there was an ongoing conversation about those two things being married and, and being the same calling on his life, actually yeah. in the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Although when I look back at, at all of the jobs I worked on with him and all the people that worked for him, mm -hmm. uh, he very much was a pastor to them, just like he was in a church. Yeah. And, and that's where, you know, it, when I was 27, almost 28, when I had my first son, some things I had some real encounters with God um, in in my own time and and with other people who brought some knowledge to me that that shifted the way I thought mm -hmm. about oh I'm I literally was sitting there waiting on ministry to happen for me that's what I was pursuing mm -hmm. and I I had a couple of key people in my life tell me like what are you waiting on like you have this career and 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 God wants to use you in this and He mm -hmm. can use you in this why are you waiting on this to happen just start doing what yeah. He's called you to yeah. do. And, and literally the way one lady put it to me is why, are, why, why do you think you have to have one foot on the mountain of the church and one in, or both feet on the mountain of the church mm -hmm. when you could have one foot in the mountain of business and one foot in the mountain yeah. of the church, huh. like God's not asking you to divide yourself. This is who you are. Yeah. And that she really unpacked that for me. It opened my eyes and it shifted that, what I was doing with my life, which is what eventually became my business from at that time, just a job to, mm -hmm. I immediately started seeing that as my career. Yeah. And, and then because it became my career, I started seeing opportunity and desire for it to become my business. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it with the Lord and with myself. And I remember asking God, like, God, if, if this is like the way you want to bring your kingdom to this earth through my life is, is through the business and I'm doing that. I need you to teach me how to do it. I need to know how to do it and give me a dream or a scripture or something. And he immediately took me to Matthew six thirty three, where mm -hmm. Jesus is Sermon on the Mount. And he says, seek first the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. and all of its righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Yeah. And that became the core scripture of, okay, if I'm going to build a business mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it with God, and I'm going to partner with the Holy Spirit in what I do. I'm going to, I'm going to seek his kingdom above everything else. That's mm -hmm. it. And that's been the core of how I've built everything I've built in and I say I've built it. It's if you looked at my life and asked me how I did it, I couldn't teach you how to do it yeah. except let me take you to him, mm -hmm. and he's gonna because he taught me. Yeah, he yeah. opened up the doors. He made things happen that I could have never made happen myself, and yeah. I'm still seeing it today. Yeah, you know, yeah. and brings the people around too. That's the thing. Oh I my gosh, it's so cool to see God bring the people into so your many. circle, and yeah. and before you know it, yeah. you're like. We got here because of this, because, and it's never self. It's always the family around yeah. you that God places. I, I think that's cool. Yeah. Those little yeah. open doors, those yeah. little network yeah. connections that yeah. you never would have made on yeah. your own. Yeah. You can't even strive to make them happen. Right. They yeah. just, the Lord literally places it in front yeah. of you. <laughs> we have some mutual it's friends. It's, yeah. 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 It's yeah. boom. Happens. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all yeah. I'll blame all of that on God. That's yeah. right. Especially yeah. the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's all your yeah. fault, God. Thank it's you. It's all your fault. Thank I'm blessed, you. God. Yeah. Well, even the closed doors. Doors. I mean, because I know oh, for me, there's for been a sure. lot of closed doors that yeah. at times I was like, for how sure. in the world did that happen that way? It shouldn't have happened. 
And then later I realized, well, the Lord closed that door and I was kind of getting in the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. He's like, hey, I got, I got some protection here so that this other opportunity it can advance It took me longer you. to appreciate those. It did. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, closed was, doors are yeah, harder yeah, yeah. to appreciate. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, especially younger. Now I oh, yeah. appreciate oh, we them a take lot them. more. You know? <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like, oh, thank God. No. They're like, <laughs> I, didn't oh, I don't need, have to do I didn't need anything <laughs> else to do. <laughs> oh, it's closed. I know better. I won't, I won't bother it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good. Well, we've mentioned a couple words right off the bat that I think will really be helpful for us to define. One is calling Mm -hmm. and one is ministry. Let's start with calling. When you guys hear a word like calling, you've both been in the church for a while. You're both, we're all in our late 20s, you know. (laughs) We are. That's right. right. Yeah. (laughs) Some of us twice. A couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) When you hear the word calling, what does that, what does that make you think now? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'd like to know what you thought of the word calling when you were a young Christian, maybe even before business, because I I have a hunch that it might have been different. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeremy. You're on the cycle. Man, Let's go. you make yeah. Jeremy go first hey, all you know, the time. I, I, I like to hear what he's got to say so I can piggyback <laughs> off of it. Okay, what can cool. I say, man? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I was young, calling was definitely, uh, like I said, it, it would have been ministry focused for me, like mm-hmm. typical traditional church ministry focused. Um, so for me, I, I didn't really hide from the fact that I was called to be a pastor. Mm-hmm. Like I, I embraced that at about 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew it. Um, I, I started doing it even at that age in my father's church. I, we didn't really have a per se youth pastor. We had Mm -hmm. people that would kind of lead the group, but nobody that really carried ministry into, into people. So I was like, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. And, um, and so doors were open up for me to be able to do that. And, and so from that age, it would have looked like, well, ministry is how we serve God with our life and affect other people. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and for me, you know, and I would have probably equated all ministry to something church related at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that God has so shifted that in me. Ministry is service period. It's, but it's, it's service in partnership with the Holy Spirit, I believe Mm -hmm. is what ministry really is, is how do we serve other people in the way that God has created us to serve them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's going to be the most effective way that we're going to impact their lives and expose them to re- the reality of what God thinks about them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, I don't, I, what I love about that is he took the ceiling off of that. He took the blinders off of that. He took the parameters off of that and allowed me to begin to see my life as one thing and not a bunch of different channels mm-hmm. or, or avenues, if you will. Um, it's because for ministry, ministry for me now is something that, it should be happening through every fiber of my being, everywhere I go, mm-hmm. and in everything that I do. There's an opportunity for me to, if you want to say it, preach the gospel, whether that's with my mouth or with my life, with my finances or with my business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have an opportunity to allow people to see this Jesus that I love and know loves me. I have an opportunity to allow them to see that. Yeah. Um, and so for me, that's ministry now. It's, it is, it is who I am. And I think it's, you know, we talk about calling. Um, it's, I think that's such an identity based word, um, that it's your calling is about how are you connected to Jesus? How in your life are you being transformed into his image Mm -hmm. so that the world can see who he is? Um, through who he's created you to be, yeah, you know, and, and so it's not about, you know, what I do with my life as much as it is about who I do it with. There yeah. Go. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always like to look at it from a ministry standpoint, growing up, I thought you had to be the pastor, you mm-hmm. know, that real yeah. legalistic view, you got to be the pastor. Yeah, you yeah. got to be, you got to be called to start up a church or you got to be a missionary. Mm-hmm. And as I've grown in my understanding of who the Lord is and what, what ministry really is. I, I've quickly found that the ministry goes anywhere I go. I, I can carry that out everywhere I go, whether it's at the grocery store, or in business, or in the church. Um, it's it's here. And so um, I've found great joy and great peace as, as well, knowing that I can walk in my calling, walk in my ministry mm-hmm. um, every day, all day. And I don't have to be in the four walls of the church. I can actually do it as I lead, as I serve, as I do the things that God's entrusted me to do. Um, it's, it's really fun too, because I talk to 
often I talk to the people that work and serve. I, I, we serve together, the yeah. people that work for, for me that we serve together. And so, um, as we serve our customers and as we do business together, um, I often tell them it's, it's, this is a ministry. This is a calling. God has called us to Conroe, Texas, to be the business that we are today and to service the customers that he's already got lined up for us. We're just walking it out. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, we let, to Jeremy's point, we let, we let others see the Jesus that loves us and that we love shine abroad throughout our business model. And so it's, it's really cool, um, to see it through the, the true lens versus the, the, um, lens as I grew up in that yeah. whole regimented, very, very structured, it's got to be this way and not that way. Yeah. So there's freedom in that. Yeah. And I yeah. love the way you said that, Jeremy, that calling is, is an identity question. Mm. And I think we can focus on, you know, people will say, I feel called to this, or I think God is calling me to that. Mm -hmm. But I like how you said it. Who is God calling you to be? Mm -hmm. Because who God calls you to be is is his light yeah. and yeah. an example of his son, no matter mm -hmm. where you are. Everywhere. But yeah. I imagine that's not always easy to do, um, particularly in the business world. Yeah. So those, I mean, you both have businesses, you have employees. How do you model this to your employees um, when it's a secular position? It's a yeah. secular job. It's a secular um, vocation. How do you yeah. model this and teach it to your employees as well? I take it from the start. So at the hiring process, you know, we have, we have a set of core values and standards that we don't deviate from. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and those are biblical standards and they come across in a non preachy way to, to my employees, but they're standards that, that are scriptural. And, and we have the scripture there and we, we don't deny it. I mean, if you want to come to work for my company, you're coming to work for a company that's held at the highest level of integrity and the standards that we operate and function under, um, are God given. And so, I, I create the standard at the very jump. They know there's no denying it. And then we hold each other accountable to it. And it starts from he, it, right here. Um, mm -hmm. I may be called the leader. I may be the, the CEO of my company, the, the owner, but um, every day it's my responsibility to walk that out by example. Um, we serve each other. We love each other. We treat each other with the dignity and the care. And when we're in the secular workspace and we're treated otherwise, that's our opportunity to let the Jesus within us shine mm -hmm. to those around us too. And that's what I really try to drive home each and every week. We have a, a, a call that um, we have as a, as a group of leaders and in that call, that's that's part of the vision that we cast every single week. Mm -hmm. Hey, the core values have not changed. We're going to stay faithful to them. We might have been done wrong in a business deal, or we might have been asked to do something um, that's less than um, respectable, but we're going to uphold that standard that we know is is there. And um, it's it's been something that some people accept, and then some don't. And, mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate the ones that don't, and those unfortunately find yeah. themselves... Um, at a better place for them at, at, in with regard to a workspace. And, um, that's okay too. Um, mm -hmm. we know that we're not going to be the mold for everybody. We're not going to be the perfect fit for everybody, but the ones that do want to come to work for us are going to, are going to accept the values that we have. So, yeah. mm -hmm. yep, definitely. I, yeah, he said it. I mean, from, from the jump, um, it's, I think that's a culture question, right. And, and what Billy is talking about, it's the same thing that we do is we, we had to decide who we are, you know, come from a place again of identity. Mm -hmm. Who are we? Yeah. This is who we are. And then we mm -hmm. establish that identity as our value system. This is who we are as individuals. This is who God's created us to be. And collectively, this is who we are as a company. Mm -hmm. This is how God wants to express who we are to this earth. Yeah. And that's how I see it. It's like, if you wanted to look at my business the way I look at it, I look at my business the same way most pastors probably look at their church. Mm -hmm. What kind of expression from this church do I want to go out into the community, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's the same thing. That's the exact same way I view my business. Because frankly, I started with a pastor's mindset and became a business owner. Most mm -hmm. people I grew up in church listening to started in the business world and became <laughs> pastors. Like So every story I heard was how to leave the business world and become come into the ministry. And I'm like, yeah. well... God had told me to do the opposite thing. Is there anybody out there that can teach me how to do this? And yeah. there really wasn't a lot of people to teach me how to do that. So I'm like, okay. So I'm a, so I'll tell people all the time. I'm a, I'm a pastor in a business suit, although I'm in a hoodie right now. <laughs> I'm a pastor because yeah, yeah. I do not wear suits. No. <laughs> Thank God my business doesn't warrant that need most of the time. But, but effectively, like I'm a pastor behind yeah. a desk. Right. And that's so, so what do pastors do? They, they preach the gospel. 
They study the scripture. They communicate the word of God. They they steward people. They shepherd people. They pray for people. Mm -hmm. They encourage, yep. strengthen, and equip people mm -hmm. for the working of the ministry. Yeah, that's exactly what I do every day in my business, and I make it pretty well known. And it's built into our value systems. Uh, we we also have weekly meetings with our managers, and um, you know, a core like weekly meeting team meeting, whatever you want yeah. to call it. And we operate our meeting on what I call like a six P principle. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's the structure of our meeting is we start, it goes through, uh, let me see if I'll get this right. Prayer mm -hmm. projects, priorities, um, problems, mm -hmm. people, and purpose. Okay. Right. And so we address all of those things as we go. And if you'll notice, we start with prayer and we end with purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. We and right before purpose we get we get to the people. And we get to the people who are who are the people that we're having problems with. And and before we finish with purpose, who are the people we need to celebrate today? Mm -hmm. And so we build everything around what we do, everything that we do, we build it around the people's lives that we're impacting it. because it's about how can we serve them better? Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't start a business to, to, I don't think I started a business to serve people. I started a business to help my family, Yeah, you know, and then because I knew God had put particular purpose in my life behind it. But it has, as he's grown me in learning how to be a good leader in business and through relationships with guys like Billy and pastor Derek and other business leaders in the community too, mm -hmm. I learned like, man, they, these people, we're serving these people that work for us. They, yeah. Yeah, they're hired to do a job for me, but my job for them is to serve them. That's right. Yeah, and that's, that's the way exactly. I lead. Wow. And so um, the, the best pastors I've seen in my life were servants. Hmm. The yeah. best of them were always servant. They always want to know, man, what can I do for you? How can mm -hmm. I pray for you? Yeah. How can I help you? What can the church do for you today? You know, and that's those are the questions that I want always rolling through my head mm -hmm. as a business leader. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll add something else too. Um, you know, the hiring and the process of getting employees, they're not all, at least that come to work for me, they're not all, um, you know, this church going saved and sanctified yeah. Yeah. Christian. Um, yeah. and, and to me, I see that as something that makes our company a little bit of, uh, um, outreach driven too, I yep. guess you could say, mm -hmm. yes. because those, those that do come to work for us, they see our, our company and our, our, our lives, if you will, our business as a place that they can come and glean um, the love and the joy and the different characteristics that we carry within yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And I have found over years of, of hiring people that are not going to the same church we go to or doing the things that we do um, <laughs> within a short period of time. 90% of them find some sort of difference in their life. And there's been some that, hey, I I'm going to church this weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay, well, th tell me more, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And so you For get sure. to have this organic conversation that comes back mm -hmm. to God and back to our faith and back to the core values yet again of putting God in every bit of business. So yeah, man. Yeah, the, the best moments I've had have been those moments where, you know, we, we have a lot of people that work remotely for us now, but we, we have in-person stuff as well. And, and so whether it's a knock on the door or, or an email or mm -hmm. a phone call, they always start real timidly, mm -hmm. uh, but it's always like, Hey man, can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. Can I talk to you for, for a moment? Can we chat? I'm like, Absolutely. And I, I can always tell what's about to come. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's going to be like, will you pray for yeah, me? Yeah, I love Will it. you pray for me? Hey, <laughs> yeah. will you pray for me and my wife or yeah. for my kid? And and it's and it's the people that, um, not that you would least expect it, uh, maybe at first, but I've come to expect it from these people yeah. who, you know, they onboarded with our team and, and you were questioning, man, they were great at their job. They didn't exactly buy into the culture, but they accepted it good enough. Mm -hmm. And and I now when I see that, I just take it on as a, a as a, a challenge for our culture and for our team of like, all right, ministry opportunity. We're, we're gonna mm. oh, we're gonna win hearts here. Yeah. Like we're gonna mm. love them so well and yeah. serve them so well yeah. that they're going at at some point in time they're gonna they're gonna loosen up. They're gonna lay back and they're gonna be like, man, these these people actually care about me. That's mm -hmm. right. Like I, yeah. and I can't tell you how many times, and not because of me, but because of. Man, I've got team members that leaders that have just man, they just bought in. Like God sent me crazy awesome leaders <laughs> that that bought in, and I have to say it that way because yeah. I didn't even recruit them. They just showed up, and <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you want to work with me? And yeah. Like, oh. yeah. And it wasn't because I thought they could do the job. It was because I saw their character and yeah. I saw their heart, and I'm like, yep, that's what I want. There you yeah. go. And so we started hiring for culture more than we hired for technical skill. Man, that changed everything. Yeah. And yeah. I, I know I know there's a lot of schools of thought out there about that, but I know what God's called me to do and how He's called me to lead my business. And so culture, more particularly establishing the culture of the kingdom in our company yeah. is priority number one. And we just let everybody know that up front. And if they're not okay with it, they'll, even if they say yes and mm -hmm. want to work, 
uh, they might leave. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's okay. Lord bless them on their way. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but the ones that stay, man, we have such an opportunity to disciple them into a faith that they have not known yet. Yeah. 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 You know, and um, I think, I think frankly, um, the impact I get to have as a person with my life where I'm at right now, I wouldn't say is greater, but it's it's different yeah. and, and in some senses further reaching than I ever could have if I were a pastor of a church. Definitely. Because half of the people that work for me still don't go to church and will not go to church. Mm-hmm. So as a pastor, I never get to talk yeah. to those people. I yeah. never get to reach those people or impact them. Mm-hmm. So any business leaders listening to this podcast that that are men or women of faith and, and go to church, like know the impact mm-hmm. and the arm and the legs and the feet you are as an extension of the body you're connected with. What we do is important in our communities. Mm-hmm. And it's something that our our pastors and our staff members at our church can't do because yeah. God didn't call them to. He called us to. That's yeah. right. That's Man, right. that's awesome. I love that's hearing right. you guys talk about how you almost have like a missionary mindset when it comes to your businesses of you're doing so much outreach. <clears throat> and, you know, you hear the thinking of if I if I'm called into ministry, I'm going to be a pastor, like what you were saying. But exactly what you're saying, the minute someone learns I'm a pastor, their posture changes, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they lock up, yeah. they don't want to talk to me, they, their whole attitude changes. <laughs> I don't get to interface with a lot of unchurched people, yeah. Yeah. but viewing your businesses and, and your work life as your ministry and missions work, what was that process like, especially Jeremy going from this mindset of, I, I'm going to be a pastor, I want to do vocational ministry now I feel like God is shifting me to the business world. How did you start to pick up on those those wins? I'll, I'll call them those small wins of, hey, this is ministry. Hey, I am affecting life change out here. Yeah. What were those first initial hints for you? <laughs> well, I have some, God did the work. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah. say that. Um, and I was, man, so I got to tell it. Yeah, I just Go probably need to tell a story to tell, tell you it. how. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so yeah. I was working... <clears throat> I was working as a as a consultant, and I, I won't name the company's name. They're not around anymore, but they were a pretty large corporation at the time. And I had never worked in that kind of environment up to that point. Um, and this was pretty early on in my journey. I mm-hmm. would say 2010 is when God earmarked me for this calling of like, mm-hmm. I'm going to take you into business, and, and I'm going to teach you how to do ministry in the business world. Mm-hmm. And that became very like clearly communicated from him to me. I mean, when, when it started happening, like it was crazy stuff. Like I was having dreams. I was having encounters with him. I was seeing stuff in the scripture that was pointing out to me. Mm-hmm. I was having people come up to me in my life who knew me and were like, Hey, have you thought about this? I'm like, it's literally all I think about all the time now. <laughs> Glad you said it. Yeah. You know, just, just the Lord was <clears throat> confirming where he was taking me time. And, and I needed that encouragement. Yeah. Otherwise I would have just Hey, I'm just going to go back to what I know. It's mm-hmm. safe here, right? Yeah. And for me, I've told people now, it would have taken less faith for me to be a pastor than it would for me to be a business owner. Wow. Yeah. I knew that world. I had grown up in that world. I was comfortable in that world. It takes plenty of faith to be a pastor. Believe me, I, mm-hmm. I lived in it. But but for me and where I was in my life, it wouldn't have taken a large measure of faith for me. I wouldn't have had to trust God the same way I've had to trust Him in the last mm. 14 years of my mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. And so early on in this journey, I'll tell one particular story. I'd been praying. I was like, God, I want to know, like, I want, I want like a real experience, mm-hmm. like a, like, I want you to show up in the marketplace, mm-hmm. in this office. Yeah. And, and I'm working on like the 28th floor of a 30 floor, 30 floor building. Yeah. I'm helping mentor some of their new employees and I'm in a position where I'm pretty regularly seen okay. by people at a high level in this cup and making lots and lots of money. Not me. They were. They were. Okay. Yeah, I wish I was. <laughs> yeah. I was not. It was fine, yeah. but it wasn't lots and lots yeah. of money. And, and I'm yeah. tithing on that. He said. Yeah. 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 Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. We grow every day. Man. We, we go, grow yeah. and we get better every day. No. Um, yeah. And I remember um, I was sitting at my desk and I had run out of coffee. And I remember thinking like, I've had too much coffee. And mm-hmm. this is coming on the heels of the night before praying, God, I want to have an encounter with you in the marketplace that tells me what I'm supposed to be doing here. Mm-hmm. And I, so I'm sitting at my desk, I'm, coffee's run out. And I, in my mind, I'm like, you don't need more coffee. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I want more coffee because that's, that's my life. Um, and so I get up, go to the, to the kitchen area where they had, they had coffee already made for you. It was fantastic. You never uh-huh. had to make your own coffee. Wow. Yeah. It's just always there. It's yeah, a never ending yeah. fountain. And um, 
behind me, I hear sobbing. Mm -hmm. I hear this lady. And I turn around. It's a lady I knew that I worked with. And she's crying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look around and nobody around. I'm like, hey, are you you good? Of course not. She's crying. Right. You good? And she she just begins to tell me, like, she had just been diagnosed with breast cancer. And she didn't know what she was going to do. She was crazy scared, um, you know. And dude, she's like, I just don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, our insurance is going to cover some of it, but we may not have the money for all of it. Just don't know what to do. And this, the, the old, like it's a scripture where, uh, Peter and them saw the lame man healed where mm-hmm. they said silver and gold, you know, uh, but that yeah. was an old children's song from my old school days in church, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give yeah. unto thee. You know, and then he went lump, j- jumping and leaping and praising God because he got healed. That song started playing through my head, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Head gun." I knew what <laughs> I knew what was about. I knew what God was asking me to do. Yeah. I didn't have provision for this woman that she wow. needed. She felt like she needed, but in that moment, I could give her one. The one thing I had, the one thing I had was was my trust in God, who mm-hmm. I knew Him to be. So I'm like, "Can I?" Uh, here's here it is. I think God's saying I need to pray for you. Mm-hmm. If you can believe that, will you let me pray for you? Absolutely. So we said a quick prayer and that was, that was that, that was it. And mm-hmm. I went back to my desk and, wow. you know, two weeks later, two weeks later, I'm, I typically would get there earlier than everyone else or earlier than most. Um, and, and if you're operating your calling, get there early. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> nice tip. Yeah. yeah nice yeah, tip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sh- let them know. Let them know. know. Yeah. Let them know. But, uh, I hear her bust through the doors of our floor and I, all I can hear is, where's Jeremy? Where's Jeremy? And I couldn't tell if it was like oh. excited or angry, like, uh-huh. oh my gosh. Well, she comes she comes in and yelling through the hallway, where's Jeremy? I've got to tell him what the doctor said. So I, I poke my head out in the hallway and she comes running up and gives me this huge hug. Wow. And she's like, I just got back from the doctor yesterday. The results, they called me first thing this morning. There's no cancer anywhere oh whatsoever. God. It's completely gone. God, And then she's saying, God healed me. Jesus did it. Yeah. Jesus did it. Like oh that. And Lord. she's like, Te- crying wow. at that point i'm crying yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know people in the hallway are crying because they knew her well <laughs> yeah guys from that moment forward my office became a revolving door of those little knocks mm. just that one thing that one moment i asked god for an encounter man he showed up in a huge way mm-hmm. and i think like when we talk about business and ministry and how to marry those lives and what it looks like for me, it's, I'm asking the questions. What does it look like for God to come to work with me today? Mm -hmm. What does it Mm -hmm. look like if Jesus shows up as the boss of this company today? How are lives being impacted? Who's getting affected? And if, and I don't see that kind of stuff, not even close to all the time. That's one of maybe, maybe three stories close to that, that I have in my whole life. Mm -hmm. But, but what I see is I see lives being transformed on a constant basis through consistency, through love, through care, through servant leadership. And every now and then the kingdom crashes in because somebody's in need and you had the faith to say yes to that crazy thing God said. So how did I know God did that. Wow. And yeah. how can you deny that God's saying yes to something in your life when he shows up in that path in that way? Yeah. He didn't give me a choice to back out. Mm-hmm. You know, I asked him for a sign and man, you know, it's like rod meet red sea mm-hmm. split open. Yeah, yeah. You don't say no at that point. Yeah, you just yeah. go forward. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's awesome. An awesome how did story. I know? Yeah. Madam? That's good. <laughs> Dude, that's yeah. Good. yeah. No, that's Man. great. Billy, follow that up. Oh, I know. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. But Billy, you wanted I mean, me to go first. Yeah. Same question because no, you good. went through the same <clears throat> thing. I mean, how did you start to, to do that mental shift of my career and my ministry are the same, yeah. whether my career is at a church or not? Yeah. You know, it's, it's mine is different than Jeremy's um, for sure, but man, I, I just wanted to be a conduit and and that sounds like a very bland way of um, describing where I want to go here, but I just wanted to simply be a conduit. And so being in business, you can obviously be a financial conduit, Mm -hmm. you know, with your resources financially. Um, You can be a conduit also spiritually. And I, that's really, I just want to be used by you, Lord. That was always my desire. That's always still my desire. Um, Whether that's serving, whether that's, um, you know, leading team, my team, whether that's doing anything out sweeping the floors of our shop, whatever that looks like, I want to serve. And in that service, the Lord has given me time and time again, this opportunity to just continue to grow and continue to develop as a leader and as a business. And 
um, I, I think that we can sometimes find ourselves in this narrow mindedness and that narrow mindedness will often lead us to a dead end road mm-hmm. because there's so much right here beside us that we sometimes take for granted. And mm-hmm. that's for yeah. me where I, I've really tried to focus on, I don't have to be on a pul- or on the, the, the main stage in, in a pulpit. I don't have to be in the classroom teaching. I can be behind Jeremy. Mm-hmm. I can be behind Matt. And we can still do life and ministry and business together. It's all together, though. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes we make it a little more complicated than it needs to be, maybe, Matt. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes we make it a little bit bigger than it really needs to be. Because when we can bring it b- back down to its, its very foundational principle of we can do ministry, we can do business, and they can all be under the same hand mm. of God. Yeah. It's power. Yeah. And so that's where my mindset's always been. It's like, I'm going to go out. I'm going to do the very best that I can do to portray who Jesus is within me to those around me and serve these people to the best of my ability. And just, Lord, let me be a conduit. Yeah. That's all I want to do. And I'll say this, that that is that story, that that story in, in many friends of mine, mine, my life, uh, who have followed a similar path as me and Billy, that's a commonplace in a great way story. And that is much more commonplace than the story I shared with you, even in my own life mm-hmm. of there's a, there's a process to walking this out, to walking in purpose, to yeah. walking in your purpose. And, um, you know, I think, I think a lot of times we can overcomplicate it. And for me, it, it, I, that's why I know now looking back 14 years later of this journey where why the Lord told me that core scripture, Matthew six thirty three, mm-hmm. going yeah. all the way back to the beginning for me in mm-hmm. this journey is seek first the kingdom. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about all the other things. Yeah. Don't worry about how your business is going to have more leads, more yep. sales, more revenue. Yep. Don't worry about how you're going to scale or hire more people. All mm-hmm. of those things are concerns. They're all needs. It's all realities. Yes, yeah. it is. And Jesus was saying that from a place of reality. Right. He knew the need. Don't worry about the shoes, yep. the food, mm-hmm. the clothes. Don't worry about these things. Yep. God's going to supply those needs. Instead, seek the kingdom first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think if, if, if I could talk to anyone listening about how to walk in your purpose, especially in our lane, is seek the kingdom first. Yeah, yeah, like oh, yeah. Make that the 100%. first thing. Give him the first 15. Give him the last 15. Yep. There's all kinds of tips and tricks, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, find what works for you in how to make God and his call for your life and who he is in your life a pr- the priority. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you do that, the things that the things that need to happen to open up the doors for the next phase and the next phase, they are going to happen. They will mm-hmm. come. They, they will, will absolutely mm-hmm. happen. Doors yeah. will close. Yeah. Doors will open. Yeah. Yeah. And they're yeah. always going to be the right ones because he's the one going ahead of us. That's yeah. um, we just got to put him. I know it sounds simple yeah. and it is simple, but it's not always easy. Right. To yeah. put God first in everything. That's you do. right. And yeah. you know, the other thing, Jeremy, is as you and I've discovered and and for myself i'll speak for myself it took me a little longer than maybe you or some of the others um but it's surrounding yourselves with those of like faith that will continue to help you and encourage you when you can't encourage yourself sometimes because we do we the matrix of numbers and and Mm -hmm. staffing and payroll and whatever 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 the list is endless yeah those things can be overwhelming to a business owner and to people in business period and sometimes you you just you just get tired, yeah. and to have somebody in your corner that that will remind you, hey man, the Lord is is your shepherd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't have to want, but you have to trust Him, and you have yeah. to walk in faith, and you have mm-hmm. to be a good steward of what He's got in front of you here. Well, yeah, man. you want the dream, and it's down there. It's it looks great. The vision board on on the wall. You're you're looking at it every single day of the week, but it takes steps, and those little steps progress, and before long, you're you're running this marathon, and you're mm-hmm. crossing the finish line. So. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's definitely important to keep people around you though. Yeah. That's awesome. I think it's easy for us to forget that when we look at the gospels, you know, we get these pages of the last three years of Jesus's life and it's easy to focus on the sermon on the mound and these miracles, Mm -hmm. but much of his life was just day in and day out living with his disciples being a carpenter, you know, feeding his ministry. That was Mm -hmm. part of his life was just doing and figuring that out with people around him. Um, I think that can be easy for Christians to forget is that 
when God said, they'll know you'll, you're my disciples by your love, mm-hmm. yeah. it mm-hmm. doesn't just mean your love when you're at church or yeah. if you're a bishop or a pastor. Right. It's yeah. your love in the business world. <clears throat> yep. Yep. The car rider line. or you know. And trust that you can hear the voice of the Lord too, I think is another mm-hmm. big thing. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times we get all these distractions and noises and different things. You're like, man, are we going anywhere? Like, Jeremy, are we really going to make it to next month? You know, we got another quarter coming. Are we going to, are we going to get there? there? (laughs) But but don't listen to the distractions. Stay in faith. And, you know, I had a, I had a mentor of mine that I I was fortunate enough to have him several years into the, to this journey in my life. And, and I was, I was asking him some questions and was kind of in a place of frustration. Man, how how do I do this? Like, how Mm -hmm. do I just keep going? And like, you know, I, I, you know, how do I focus on what God wants me to have when all these things in business, they're just in front of me mm-hmm. every day. I've got to, yeah. do, it's, the, it's, that's the real stuff, that's the real you know, deal. it's the real mm-hmm. stuff to your point. And he, he, he said, let me ask you a question. It's okay. He said, what if there were no church? Mm. What if there were no church services to go to? What if there were no worship music? What if there were no pastor to listen to? Mm-hmm. What if there were no one to carry you through this spiritually to lead you that way? how would you know that God called you to do this in the first place? Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I didn't have a great answer. What I realized is that I was weak in my prayer life. Um, I was weak in my life in the scripture and I was weak on hearing the voice of God in my own life. Mm -hmm. And and he helped me discover that he didn't say, he knew it. He didn't say it. He didn't have to. I walked away from that. Not head hung, head hung low, but, but very challenged, yeah. very convicted. Yeah. And so I saw, I set out to, be, to become more established in those disciplines in my life. And as I did, you know, obviously the church is here. It's strong. It's great. We have great stuff going mm-hmm. on that, that feeds us and shepherds us. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Certainly. But, but if it were to go away, if it were to go away, I have established myself in a relationship with God that will sustain me yeah. mm-hmm. through anything that could come my way. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's that's the thing that I hang my hat on as far as how do I confront hard things in business? I confront them the same way we should be con- confronting any hard thing in that's our so life. Hmm. Is is. We, we trust the source, yeah. tr- the source of life, the source of hope, and the source of peace. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's the same process, yep. how we function in business. And that's why Billy said it's not two things. It's one thing. Yeah. I call it, I like to call it like the marriage between our faith and business mm-hmm. yep. because, because marriage to me is two things becoming one. That's right. And it's the same concept is these, this, we don't live dualistically in this life. Mm-mm. God didn't create us to do that. Double minded no. men are yeah. unstable. That's right. Yeah. He created us to be singular in our approach and our approach is always him first yep. and everything flows from the vine yep. from there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the pruning process to your vine illustration. Mm. The pruning process is necessary for growth, Oof. and that's something too. As business owners, we don't always like the pruning process in either business Boy, or. You in that good. But this, <laughs> but this awesome. is the true. No, but this is the true. Is. This is the true. Is. Yeah, from glory to glory and mm-hmm. continuing to elevate yourself in business. We didn't you practice have to, that. that was no, good. that was. <laughs> you all seem <laughs> rehearsed. Yeah, yeah. It really it, but it's true, and I think sometimes again that people sometimes <laughs> will neglect to realize those things yeah, and. And um, it's part of the process. Would you guys say you found your sweet spot in life? Come on, Matt. That's not. That's a loaded question. A sweet I know spot. it is. Isn't he, it? he said sweet spot. I, I teed <laughs> you up there. So I'll, I'll, or I'll be. I'm, I'll yeah. be vulnerable. Okay. I'll yeah. be vulnerable. I'm not a naturally contented person. Yeah, mm. me either. Uh, my wife. My wife knows me the best, <clears throat> and she knows that I'm. There's there's good there's good and bad qualities to to this, mm-hmm. um, but I'm not a person that gets content with sameness, or enough, or good enough. Mm-hmm. I'm always pushing for yeah. more, for better, for stronger, for faster, for whatever it is to to in, for increase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now the downside of that, when it's in an unhealthy place or a broken place, whatever you yeah. want to call that, that can that can look like not trusting God. It can be like not being satisfied or content or yeah. not having peace or yeah. rest in your mm-hmm. life. And I've definitely experienced those things. So for me to say I'm in a sweet spot would did it from would probably be for me to deny a little bit of my own nature and mm-hmm. my own characteristic that I know God gave me yeah. to, to naturally challenge the status quo. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with that, I will say, I will say that I am at peace mm. with who God's created me to be and how I'm functioning in that yeah. sweet spot, man. I don't know about that. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause I got yeah. goals. I got goals upon goals. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. That, Maybe. Like, yeah. Reaching goals are my sweet spot. Oh, there you go. There you go. You're a yeah, goal setter yeah, and getter. Yeah. 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 I'll, 
purpose. We'll yeah. say that. Yeah. Have you found your purpose for your life? God's purpose for your life. I think for me, I can say I'm I'm walking in step with what God's will is for my life right yeah. now. Um, I, I, I like Jeremy and. Man, I'm always striving yeah, yeah. to do better and yeah. to grow and to get. Yeah, it, it's just it's in my DNA. It's it's. In but there. even that is part of God's design for it your is. life. Totally, both I of agree. you have said that totally. God designed you that way to I continue agree. to push. Yeah. What's next? How can we improve? Yeah. yeah, even that is a part of how God designed each of you. Yeah, to yeah. live out the purpose for your life. Yeah. I think There's, when when I think sweet spot, I think like firing on all cylinders. Yeah, right? really. There you go. Right. And I would say this, that I, in my life where I'm at right now, my relationship with God, my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my children, and my relationships in business are the best they've ever been. Hmm. They're the best they've That's ever good. been. That's Can good. they be better? Yeah. Always. Can they grow? Yeah. Uh, but wow, I'm incredibly happy. Um, but I, I describe those in that order specifically mm-hmm. because that's how I need to grow and that's how I need to address them. Mm-hmm. Um, and the business thing, it's, it's, it's less than tertiary yeah. to who Damn. I am and what wow. I do with my life. Yeah. It's, it's the way God's given me to financially bless my family and bless my community with the outpouring, mm-hmm. the overflow mm-hmm. of that. Um, but, but man, it's, it's, it's God, family, and everything else That's right. for me. Me too. And I know, because I know that I know that I know that if I get those right, if I pour into those the right way, the rest of it really, it, it's, I'm going to say it again. It's Matthew 6, 33, right. guys. Like, the rest comes. The hmm. rest of it comes. And I have watched the rest of it get added to me. Yeah. And I've had to learn how to trust God a lot. A lot. <laughs> and be way more patient than yeah. I prefer to be. Because yeah. I don't prefer patience. Yeah. No. I do more now because I've I've grown to see the benefit mm-hmm. of it. I've yeah. gotten to actually yep. see some fruit on the backside of yep. it. And so I'm like, yeah, I can be patient here. Uh-huh. I can much, do that. Much like yeah. closed doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> we, can, where, we can accept the closed doors. Whereas like now <clears throat> I might be willing to wait a year for something yeah. I've only would have waited a, a month yeah. for yeah. prior, right? Like, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. I can wait a year for Delayed that. gratification yeah, right. isn't bad. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. It's all bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, versus yeah. I got to go make this happen. Yeah. 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 Don't make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Don't make it If God said make it happen, he's going to do it. Yeah. He's going to do it. Like, just work with him. You don't have to make it happen. You don't have to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something that I see. It seems to be something more recent is younger business owners, younger people in in general. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of our nature, right? Especially men where you just want to get it, get it, get it, get it. And it's like, no, you got to rein it back in Mm -hmm. so that you can be patient and follow the voice of the Lord. Cause man, when you get out there and make it happen, that's just one of those bad. I'm going to, I'm going to get on a soapbox. I can't stand the hustle and grind culture. Yeah, thank you. No, like no. I can't stand it because there's yeah. no peace in it. Right. It's all about ourselves. Mm. It's completely self-centered. It's about what I can accomplish if I just work hard enough. Yeah. The lie in there is I know some of the poorest people in the world that I know are some of the hardest working people yeah. I know. They've wow. worked their fingers to a bone. Yeah. 12 hours, 15 hours, seven days a week, whatever they got to do to make ends meet. So they, there's nobody I know that hustles harder than some, some of the, some low income earners. Yeah. Yeah. So hard work, hustle, grind, and putting more into it does not always equate to getting what you want out of life. That's true. Mm-hmm. It's it's more about it's more about trusting God and trusting the process that He's got you in. The beautiful thing about that is, I I'm in a place in my life now where I, I work real hard. Don't get me wrong, but for the for the input that I get, the output that I have to give, the measures of those things, like where it, my output was had to be super high to mm-hmm. get a certain level mm-hmm. of input. I've seen those things change. Mm. Yeah. I've seen the balance of those things go up. There's so much more efficiency. Oh, that's the best mm. word. Mm. There's so much more efficiency in the plan of the Lord yeah. for our lives yeah. and how he's, how he's going to bless yeah. us and cho- in the ways he's going to choose to do it. Yeah. He'll bring more to you than you could ever bring to yourself. Mm. That's that whole yoking up process, right? Mm. When yeah. we yoke yes. up to His will in our life, it all just flows so easy. Yes. Yeah, I, I will say too, <clears throat> and and kind of a side trail off of what you were saying, there's not a cheat code for this this whole su- success no. either. No. Yeah. You have to put in the work. You have to put in yeah. the time. You have to put in the the seeking first the kingdom, mm-hmm. and then all will be added. It's not it's not a shortcut process. There's just not a shortcut to it. And yeah. I think that's something that a lot of people think. Man, if I get it today, I don't have to get it tomorrow. No, bro, you yeah, still got to consistently mm-hmm. <laughs> get it. So, yeah. yeah. You still have to wake Being up mindful. and work hard. Oh, you yeah, do. no doubt about you it. Do. But that's yeah. not 
the end goal. Well, you know, yeah. I've I have seen mm-hmm. people that I could say I could look at their lives and and see like how my business has grown and know how hard I've worked and I can look at them if you if you're going to measure things, right? right. Like you quantify it mm-hmm. with actual numbers. I can see success and revenue, things like things mm-hmm. that business owners mm-hmm. use to evaluate mm-hmm. their success. And I I can see years where I've had much more success than other people that I knew were out there hustling harder than I was. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not because I'm not willing to, just because I've I've done that before and it didn't equate to what I wanted, but the trusting the Lord That's right. process, mm-hmm. the leaning not on my own understanding, the mm-hmm. acknowledging him in all my ways process, yeah. and then watching him unpack my path and lay yeah. it out straight in front of me, the shortest distance between two lines, yeah. not the curvy, windy yeah. road. He is the most efficient efficient process right. we could ever trust yep, in our yeah. lives and when we and, sway off you can look at the yeah. matrix if you want to look at it i've noticed at times yeah. when we lose focus oh, it's because dude. we have kind of drifted or we've kind of painful <laughs> yeah like it's painful yeah. in life but it's really painful it in is. business not to trust god it is it costs it, is. it that costs There's literal dollars yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah because like, you can look trust at god, god. Yeah. Trust i'm trying cost, to help y'all save yeah. money trust yeah. me just, just stay faithful. Now, to it. well, yeah. as we wrap this up, could you, Jeremy and Billy, just break us off a sample of of what that prayer would look like? If I'm a person, mm. I'm frustrated in life. I don't feel like I'm fulfilling God's purpose for my life. I feel like He has something more for me. I'm frustrated. Maybe I am hustling and I'm not getting ahead. Maybe I do feel like I'm supposed to be in ministry, but doors aren't opening. What does a sample prayer mm-hmm. look like? Or what did yours sound like? Or, mm-hmm. or Billy, give us yeah. something we can pray. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it very simple. Jeremy's good at giving the descriptors. I'll, I'll keep it simple. And this is, this is kind of some of the practical ways that I am anyways. I'm just kind of wired this way. Um, I would start off by just simply quieting myself. Hmm. I would find myself in that place of solitude. I'd find myself in that place where I could get alone with God. And I would actually take the Habakkuk 2-2 approach. I would get me myself a piece of paper, and I would write these things out. And I would ask the Lord simply, Lord, reveal to me the path that you would have for me in my future. Hmm. And then stop. Let that sit there and wait for the Lord to speak back. Because I think sometimes what we do, I have done it myself. I've been very much um, a victim of this, this mentality. We ask the Lord for what we want or what we think we want, having our vision board, having our Habakkuk mm-hmm. Tutu dream written down. And we think that's it and that's where it's going to go. That's how it's going to look. And the Lord actually has a different plan. He has a different purpose. He's going to still give us the desires of our heart according to his will. Mm-hmm. But if we look at it for the value or for the position that we have it written down and it doesn't turn out that way, the disappointment factor kicks in the the disgruntlement the the frustration i've been defeated the the woe is me comes into play and god's like no son i have something better or daughter i have something better for you Mm -hmm. and it may not look the way that you have it written down it will look better if you trust me if you listen to me and then if you're obedient and that would be me write it down ask the lord to show me and then take steps of faith, even though I can't see the end result. I can only see a little bit ahead of me. I can only see a little bit more ahead of me. And then as I take these steps, not strides, not gallops, not leaps, but as I take these steps, slowly but surely, that vision that I have will come into full vision, and I'll begin to walk out the the, the purpose that I have for my life according to the Lord's will, not mine. Man, that's awesome. Jeremy. That's kind of my deal. So the first thing I would say is if you don't if you don't know how already or don't feel confident in your ability to already learn to hear the voice of God. That's right. Mm-hmm. Learn to hear him speak. Learn it through the scripture. Billy did a great job the other day teaching mm-hmm. about that following up on some of Pastor Allen's stuff. But learn to hear the voice of God and, and learn to know that you've heard his voice. Yeah. Like be confident in this is the Lord. Yeah. With that, there's there's four key scriptures I brought with me today that I, I've already said one of them yeah. that I want to I want to just layer through that I think about. I literally think about these every single day. I have them in strategic places in my office where I can encounter them or at least be reminded about them every single day. The first one's Matthew 633, seek first the kingdom of heaven yeah. mm-hmm. and his righteousness. And all these things are going to be added. The next one is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he'll direct your path. Mm -hmm. The next one's Proverbs 16, 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do. Commit your work to the Mm -hmm. Lord, and he will establish your plans. Mm -hmm. He will establish your plans. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's beautiful. It's a, and I'm going to read the next one because it's just down from there. It's Proverbs 16, 9. Mm -hmm. A man makes his plans. That's right. <laughs> but the Lord establishes his steps. Yeah, that's, good. that's not a man makes his plans and God laughs, which is a quote we can hear in our culture. That's yeah. not from the Bible. Yeah, that's that's right. from a book. That's okay, right. God didn't say that. What he said is, make your plans, I'll establish your path. Mm -hmm. yeah. Commit what you do, watch me, watch me establish your plans through my path. Yeah. So what he's saying, what he's saying is I care about what you want. Yes, he does. I care about what you want. I do want you to have the desires of your heart. And I want to partner with you to get those for you. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I'm willing to establish a path in front of you that's going to be straight, that's going to help you get them mm -hmm. faster than you could ever get to them by yourself. It's not going to look how you think it would look, to mm -hmm. your point. Mm -hmm. And don't, so don't get disappointed if I take you in a different direction because I'm taking you to the end you so desire. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's going to, when you get there, you're going to find out that you desired things that you weren't able to communicate 20 years before, right. but now you have them and mm -hmm. you're thanking me because I got you to this place that you didn't even know you wanted. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's awesome. That's it, man. man, there's just so much wisdom and ministry sitting at this mm -hmm. table with you all. You got, it's just, it's so encouraging to hear the stories of you guys. And I hope it's encouraging to everyone listening yeah. that, Man, ministry is so much more than just what happens in a church building. Yeah, yeah, man. I would say it's, mostly more than what happens inside a church yeah. building. And and I hope for anyone listening that you are encouraged and and can hopefully begin to take steps to seek the Lord and, and ask what his purpose for your life would be. So Jeremy, Billy, thank you guys so yeah. much for thank being you, a bro. part. I really appreciate yeah. it. It was an it's honor. honor um, and just, man, drinking from this pool of wisdom was great. Thank you guys for being a part of Friends You Can Grow With, and I hope you'll come back next time.